Hi there, it's Lee Polite again from Axion Labs, and today I'm going to answer one of the toughest questions in the GC world, and that is, how do you develop a method for GC? Now, you may have heard my analogies before, but I, I think of this as like cooking. Like, how do you come up with a recipe for a cake? I mean, I could buy a box of cake mix, I could follow all the directions, but I wonder, who decided how much flour? How many eggs? How much sugar? Do you put the flour and the eggs in the oven first, and then do you mix them? Or do you mix them first and put them in the oven? I mean, who came up with that recipe? Well, the same thing in GC. I mean, who chose the right column length, diameter, film thickness, stationary phase, flow rate, injector temperature, injector temperature? It sounds daunting, but the reality is it's a lot simpler than it sounds. So let me give you three quick tricks to developing GC methods. Trick number one is look in a column catalog. I know it sounds like a cop-out. I know it sounds like I'm, I'm cheating here, but do not reinvent the wheel. Column catalogs contain tens of thousands of current applications that work today on GC columns. So open up the Agilent catalog, open up the Phenomics catalog, and look for benzene, toluene, xylene, look for the application, and that will give you the correct temperatures and flows and everything you need. Um, so step one, look in the column catalog. Step two, let's develop a method from scratch. Let's have this total unknown and say we have no idea uh, of what conditions to use. So the first thing I'll tell people is choose a really good uh, a, a standard column. In the GC world, we like the DB5, 5% um, phenyl, 95% methyl. You know, everyone makes one of those. Restec is called RTX5. Phenomenex is called DB5. I'm sorry, ZB5. Uh, Agilent's called DB5. So um, choose a, a five column. It's our go-to column in the GC world. It's, it separates most things. Uh, I like to have a nice 30 meter column. 0 0.25, 0 0.25 is my favorite. 0.25 millimeter diameter. 0.25 micron film thickness, that's not that important. What I'm getting at is you're gonna choose one good generic, very long column. And then we're gonna inject our sample and we're gonna run a temperature program. And what I tell people in my class, we're gonna try all the temperatures in the universe. Now, what does that mean? What is the lowest temperature you can use on a GC? Anyone know? It's pretty much room temperature, right? Room temperature, can't go below room temperature unless you have cryogenics on it. So room temperature, I call about 40 degrees. So that's the lowest temperature we can use. What's the highest temperature we can use on a GC? It's determined by the column. The column will tell you the max temperature. So let's say we're gonna go from 40 degrees to 325 degrees, and we're gonna do that at 20 degrees a minute. Um, that's a fairly fast rate, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a scan from 40 all the way up to 325 and simply see where the peaks come off. If all the peaks come off between 250 and 325, well, then there's no need to start at 40 degrees. So one good temperature program from room temperature column max, hold that column max for an extra 10 minutes and simply see where the peaks come off. That is method development in GC. It's a lot easier than it sounds. Now, what I would love to know from you guys is what works for you? What types of columns do you like to use? Um, any tricks in method development? Uh, anything that I miss out? Because I love to learn new things and I learned it from you guys. So um, go ahead and chime in.